We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hello, Spontaneous. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Friends, uh, this podcast is releasing on Christmas Day. That's a first for us in a long time. I doubt that most of you are listening to it on Christmas Day, but maybe you are. Maybe you're driving and this is filling your drive time. But wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Merry Christmas. It's been such a good year to journey with you here on the Ransomed Heart Podcast. We love doing this with you. This is the last one of the year, isn't it? Last one of the year. Oh my goodness. Yep. And they've just covered so many beautiful pieces of ground this year, so many great topics. And yeah, it's just a chance for us to say how much you mean to us and being a part of Ransomed Heart and the beauty of the gospel of the heart. I shared an experience several years ago, I think, on a podcast. Stacy and I were growing tired of our kind of typical evangelical church experience. It was just we'd been there for years and years and years, and we were looking for something different. So we shifted over to an Anglican-style church, something much more in a liturgical tradition, and it just cracked me up. It was very unsettling that we go into church the Sunday after Christmas. I mean, it was like five days after Christmas uh-huh. or something, and like I'm expecting, okay, here we go, New Year, right? And yeah. With that Christmas is in the rearview mirror, and that's that. And they start singing Christmas carols. Right. It was Christmas hymns, and all the Christmas decorations were still up, and the message was still about Christmas. And I did not know that there was something called a liturgical calendar. I didn't know that for centuries the church has looked at Christmas tide as that 12 days, the 12 days of Christmas between Christmas and Epiphany, January 5th or 6th in there, and how refreshing it was because it yanked me out of the world, which said, okay, that was nice. That was that. Now let's get back to it. Right. Like my radio station plays Christmas music, which is great. And then the very day after Christmas, it's gone. It's over. It is so lovely to go, no, now we're celebrating. Before it was Advent and the preparing and the waiting and all that. Yes, I love Advent. I love Advent too. And then it's, he came. It's Christmas time. Yes. And this goes all the way to January 6th to the Feast of Epiphany, which we also celebrate in our home. And it's a wonderful, wonderful feast of the, you know, the revelation of Christ. So it is Christmas tide. It's not over. Now, you may be very relieved that parts of it are over, but in terms of not letting the world dictate where our hearts go, not yanking us out of the story of God, I actually want to bring us back to the story, bring us back to the story that does take place after the immediate birth of Christ. But let's pick up with the visit of the Magi, Mm. and this is in Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. Now, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what is written in the prophets. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Okay, notice what's going on here. So you have political intrigue, you have the upset of a city, you have a pagan ruler. He's very concerned about his power, his throne. These mysterious figures come out of the east to worship the true king. What is this? Who is this? When did this happen? Exactly when did you see the star? Okay, notice what he's up to here. He sent them 
to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard this, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, incense, myrrh. And having been warned in a dream, not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another route. Okay, just the fascinating interplay here of dreams and nighttime and journeys Uh and mysterious figures. And intrigue. Right? By the way, we are telling the story of the salvation of the world. Wow. Okay, now it goes on. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up. He said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where they stayed until the death of Herod. And so it was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt, I have called my son. Now, when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. And then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Now, friends, we are telling the story of the salvation of the world. We are telling the single most important story that has ever unfolded on this earth. These characters are the most important characters. This is the son of of a living God. This is his mother. This is his earthly father. The angels, the rescue. What do you make of this story? I'm, I'm kind of speechless over it. It's so dangerous. It's so not the way I would have expected it to have gone. Me either. Like, think of it. You you are the Father God. You have lost the human race because of their rebellion. They have fallen into the hands of your enemy who is going to take them all to hell. You will intervene. You must intervene. Here is your plan. You are sending your son to ransom the human race. Would you do it like this? Like, it, well, yeah, it's so wild. It's so unpredictable. It's, he's the god of angel armies. So why not have angel armies surrounding an impenetrable fortress? Exactly. Exactly. You've got. I mean, like even the timing of it. He he shows the star to the wise men, so that they will arrive in time. Right, to trigger part of the story. Oh, yeah. Right? And then he has an angel appear to Joseph in the night to say, get up, get out of town. Quick, now. Now, like literally right yeah. now. Wow. Grab what you have, grab your child, who is the savior of mankind, and get out of here under the cover of darkness. You go, you, you're the living God. He is wild. You could just kill Herod. Right. Why don't you just kill him? Yeah, there's lots of ways to handle the imminent threat, but the intrigue of the story, the dreams, the, the mysterious figures, the, you know, raging politics of the day, the, the terrorism, all of it, you're going, wait a second, one, what kind of story have we fallen into? I think most people including most Christians, think that God works in very linear ways. 
I need to get something done. Boom, I'm going to do it. Right? right Very right. direct. Right. Filled with power, filled with glory. Boom. And that is not what you see in Scripture. It's not. This really pulls back the curtain of, of on so many aspects of how God works in the world. I love this description of the gospel by Frederick Buechner in his beautiful book, Telling the Truth, The Gospel is Tragedy, Comedy, and Fairy Tale. He says this. He says, it is a world of magic and mystery, of deep darkness and flickering starlight. It is a world where terrible things happen and wonderful things too. It is a world where goodness is pitted against evil, love against hate, order against chaos, and a great struggle where it is often hard to be sure who belongs to which side because appearances are endlessly deceptive. Yet, for all its confusion and wildness, it is a world where the battle goes ultimately to the good who do live happily ever after. And where in the long run, everybody, good and evil alike, become known by their true name. That is the fairy tale of the gospel, with, of course, one crucial difference from all other fairy tales, which is that the claim made for it is that it is true, that it not only happened once upon a time, but has kept on happening ever since and is happening still. Oh, my goodness. That is so beautiful. First, when you started reading that, I was thinking, I'm in Narnia. And then, no, this is, wow. That is such a good description of the life we find ourselves living. And it will really help you with some of the ways you don't understand God working. (sighs) Stay more about that. Well, I think particularly in the realm of prayer, we really think it's as simple as, I asked, and God didn't do anything. Or, I'm asking, and he's going to act with power and with glory immediately now. I and love it, it when he does that. Yeah, and sometimes he does. But often he doesn't. Right. And it can be very, very confusing, because what is your understanding, first off, friends? Christmas is this wonderful invitation back into just kind of a re-examination. What is your understanding of the story that you are part of? How do you think this story goes? Is it very linear? Is it very straightforward? Are journeys one or two days long? Are our prayers answered with lightning bolts? Is it very direct and God's witness is very, very clear, right? Or is it filled with mysterious characters and nighttime visions and flights under the cover of darkness? Is it filled with danger and death and high, high stakes? Mm. Is it filled with a great battle of good and evil? I mean, this is just a, it's just, Christmas is an opportunity for us to pause and go, this is how God works in the world. Here is his most important story of all, the invasion of the kingdom of darkness by the kingdom of God, the incarnation of Jesus Christ, and the ransom of mankind. Okay, this is the story. How does God go about things? And is that a little different than how you kind of think he goes about things? There's so much mystery, and John, I love that because on on a lighter note, it sure makes life more interesting. But on another note, we get so discouraged when it isn't working in a linear way or when God isn't moving in the way we think he should because of who he is. And to hear this story, it just comes smack dab against the way I think that he should work. To go, oh, he's God, he's sovereign, and he is so engaged with the world and with all these different facets of our humanity. And he, we have a role to play. It's more uncomfortable than I'm comfortable with. It's just amazing. You know, your your answers to prayers are coming. Yes. They are coming. But it may not be A plus B equals C. It may, it may not be pray now, God answers in two minutes. God answers by the afternoon. Boom, 
boom, boom. That's just not the- right because there's a whole other there's a whole other world realm going on. There are all kinds of other things at play here, and we won't read it, but we do encourage you to read Revelation twelve again and see Christmas from heaven's point of view and what was going on in the heavenlies and the great war. It's just very encouraging, gang, that you have found yourself in the most beautiful, most dangerous story ever. And it's not nearly as safe as simple Christianity has maybe led you to believe, but it is good. It is valiant. It is heroic. And God is working. Oh, he is working. I love Beekner. Oh, it not only happened once upon a time, but it's kept on happening. <laughs> and it is happening right now. The invasion of the kingdom is happening right now. You're part of it. It's happening all around you. And this will really actually help your faith. Yes. It will help your faith because if we stake it all on this quick and easy, boom, 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 lightning bolts, answers to prayer, God moves, and that's it, you get pretty discouraged. Here's the new thing for me. So what I'm asking God now is, what's your next move? When things go sideways in our lives, when a diagnosis shows up, when a friend calls and their kid is missing, when hard, hard things hit— it throws me. It's like, come on, God. Yeah. Your, your world, your people, your kingdom, come on. Well, instead of my faith spiraling, now I'm asking, okay, God, what's your next move? You're brilliant at the next move. You have these cunning next moves. So instead of going to, oh, come on, where are you? Why aren't you, you know, fill in the blank. Now we can say, okay, Father, what's your next move? And what's my next move because of it, right? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. So we're still in Christmas in two ways, folks. We're still in Christmas tide. If you're listening to this before January 6th and the Feast of Epiphany, we are still in Christmas tide. And the church is still celebrating this extraordinary story. You are also still in Christmas because this is still unfolding on the earth. Yes. The invasion continues. And we are a part of a story that is filled with magic and mystery, deep darkness and flickering starlight, a world where terrible things happen and wonderful things too, a world where goodness is pitted against evil, love against hate, order against chaos— in a great struggle, where often it's hard to be sure who belongs to which side because appearances are endlessly deceptive. Yet for all its confusion and wildness, it is a world where the battle goes ultimately to the good. God is winning. Oh, God is winning. The kingdom is winning. It's just wild, like the story of Christmas is wild. Wow, that's reorienting. Beautiful. Thank you. And so, Merry Christmas, friends. Love sharing this story with you. Love being in this wild, beautiful fight with you. Prayers of blessing over your Christmas tide. Thank you for your prayers for us and for our team over our Christmas tide. And we'll come back to you in the new year. <laughs>